this will not be a typical Trinity Sunday homily. Much could be said about the Holy Trinity, and on Trinity Sunday it's normal to hear priests or deacons stand before their people trying to explain the triune God with analogies, all of which inevitably fall short. It's normal to hear things like, God's like a three-leaf clover, one plant with three leaves. Or, God's like a human being, body, mind, and spirit. My personal favorite, which I did hear in a homily one time, true story, God is like a taco with a shell and meat and cheese. This won't be one of those homilies. But honestly, when talking about the Trinity, nothing beats the words that we recite every week in the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. From these words, so familiar to us, we find two great truths. First, God is one. Second, God is three co-eternal, co-equal persons in relationship. One and equal. Unity and equality. And today, for us Catholic Christians who believe that all human beings are made in the image and likeness of God, this is important for us to reflect upon. Saying that we are made in God's image and likeness does not mean that we look physically like God. It means that we share in his, in his nature of relationship, of unity and equality. And it means that when there is disunity or inequality, when we wound relationship with our sin, then we have a responsibility to repent and to work to heal. And these past weeks in America, we have seen the wounds of sin, division, and racial inequality at the forefront in our nation. So full disclosure, I am hesitant to preach about this. I'm hesitant to preach about it because of the color of my skin. My experience is not the same as my black and brown brothers and sisters. So my instinct during this time has not been to share my opinion or to speak out. My instinct has been to listen. But I also know that as a priest of Jesus Christ, I have a responsibility to preach against injustice. And as I watched the video of George Floyd's murder at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer, as I followed with heavy heart the story of the senseless murder of Ahmaud Arbery in Atlanta, as I hear and listen to story after story after story from my black and brown brothers and sisters in Christ, I realize I must say something. I realize that the stirring in my heart is the Holy Spirit saying that in America, we are not one. We are not equal. And that this evil of racism is demonic and sinful. Bishop Robert Barron has called racism and slavery and white supremacy the original sin of America. And he's right. White supremacy and racism runs deep in the very fabric of our nation. Whether it was white people stealing all the land of this continent from the Native Americans, or the presence of slavery in our nation from its earliest days, racism and white supremacy have been a part of America from the start, a cancer that has been with us from the beginning. Less than 100 years after the founding of our nation, we fought a civil war over slavery. But see, white supremacy and racism did not end with slavery. After the Civil War, there was the KKK and lynch mobs. There were Jim Crow laws and segregation. 
There were written laws and unwritten rules seeking to subjugate black Americans, perpetuating the original sin of America and pulling us as a nation further and further away from our Trinitarian call to be one and equal. If we are one nation under God, then we should reflect God, who is one, co-eternal, co-equal, a relationship of life and love. Racism has no place. Like I said, it is a cancer that has eaten away at our nation for generations. And this past week has thrown it in white America's face, in my face, that this evil, this national sin, has not gone away. It never did. It continues today. Friends, it is our duty to oppose racial bigotry and equality in all forms. It is our responsibility to stand with our black and brown brothers and sisters who feel angry and afraid, who feel unheard and voiceless, who feel victimized and oppressed. It is our obligation as Christians, as Catholics, as men and women who sign ourselves with the cross and profess faith in Jesus Christ to be part of the solution to the racial divide in our nation. And the very first step to that healing is for us to listen, to listen to what our African-American brothers and sisters are saying. And then the next step is for us to look within ourselves and root out with the help of the Holy Spirit all sin, all racism, all holdovers and vestiges of our nation's original sin. For if racism is America's original sin, then like the theological original sin, all have been touched by it. None are clean. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But first, we must listen. This listening will not be easy because it will make us uncomfortable. It will challenge us. It will invite us to ask some uncomfortable questions of ourselves and each other. I remember a conversation I had once with a friend who was a young black woman. This conversation took place about 10 years ago. And at one point I said, look, I don't see color. To which my friend said, Yes, you do. Everybody does. And she reminded me that saying things like, I don't see color or race shouldn't matter, ignore the fact that one, race does matter in our nation far too often. And that two, by saying I don't see color, by saying that I'm shutting down her. I'm shutting down the conversation and failing to listen to her experience. And three, she said, when you say, I don't see color, you're ignoring the fact that Jesus Christ sees color. He sees race and culture. Doesn't ask us to be something we're not. Doesn't ask us to put our culture or our race or our family of origin or any of that aside to come to him. My friend reminded me that day that we are not part of the solution if we bury our heads in the sand. And that conversation revealed something else to me. It revealed that even I have been affected by our nation's original sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In our second reading today, St. Paul exhorts us, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Mend your ways. Have I ever said that a white athlete was a hard worker while a black athlete was a natural talent? As if the black athlete didn't have to work as hard as the white athlete to get where they are. Have I ever remarked at how well-spoken and articulate a black person on TV is being surprised they don't sound like how I expect them to sound. 
Have I ever replied to someone saying black lives matter by saying all lives matter? No one is suggesting that all lives don't matter, that white lives don't matter, or Asian lives, or Latino lives. Our brothers and sisters say black lives matter because right now it is black lives that are being snuffed out. Our brothers and sisters say black lives matter because the names of the dead are far too often and disproportionately the names of black men and boys, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and the list goes on and on and on. Our brothers and sisters say black lives matter because our black brothers and sisters are hurting, they are grieving, they are frustrated, they are fed up, and they deserve to be heard. Our brothers and sisters say black lives matter because for too long, black people have been denied true justice, true unity, and true equality in our nation. So no, this was not a typical Trinity Sunday homily. But on this day when we honor the co-eternal, co-equal Trinity, the divine relationship of life and love in whose image and likeness we are all created, we must ask that same Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to heal our nation. The racial divide is deep. The wounds have festered. And our original sin is still with us. And the only thing that rids us of sin is God himself. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. We turn to the Father now in prayer. We turn to the Son in Holy Communion. We turn to the Holy Spirit now for healing. We turn to the triune God for we know that all true healing starts with him. We repent of our complicity in our nation's original sin for what I have done and for what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. We take up the mantle as members of the body of Christ to work to be part of the solution, to work for justice. With God's help, we will listen. With God's help, we will learn. With God's help, we will work. With God's help, we will be unafraid to stand with our black brothers and sisters. With God's help, we will say that yes, indeed, black lives matter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.